This video is dedicated to Christian Roberts. Christian, thank you. Well, it's backed by popular demand. Anawan, the Ruin Thief, versus Abun Muldaya Ancestor, Crick, son of Yorgmoth, and Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. Yeah, we're up against some powerful commanders this time around. Uh, unclaimed territory is not a tap land, so I think we're alright going for a turn 2 Bitter Blossom. We've got a turn 1 play as well. We'll probably be able to go for a Brazen Borrower as well, so we're doing alright on the curve there. We'll need to get into another blue source though. Alright, getting to Mana Drain on turn 1. So let's go for Unclaimed Territory for Rogue. And we'll get out a Changeling Outcast. And then more Counter Magic for us in Fierce Guardianship. So let's just get down the Bitter Blossom. We've got another turn or two to get into a land here. And let's just poke Crick for one. Hopefully they're going to struggle on life as the game progresses. A bounce land now for Sisse. Everyone just played a land on turn one, by the way. And a Valakut is over here for Billy Kills, friend of the channel, up against three patrons today. And Kills is bringing us a boon, Muldaya Ancestor. Crick, son of Yorgmoth, coming from Juggalo. And then Gogo -Go Batman is on Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. Big thank you to my three opponents for supporting the channel on Patreon. Just more lands from our opponents, so we get to make a Fairy Rogue token. We get another unblockable rogue in Slither Blade. I don't know if we want to actually play that. Wonder if it's just worth bouncing something to slow someone down with Brazen Borrower. I'd hate to play all of these spells into a board wipe. And we can't animate our Muta Vault because... Uh, yeah, it's going to have summoning sickness, isn't it? Because we played it this turn. So we'll swing in at Billy Kills. And I'll just hold up the Brazen Borrower, I think. First commander of the game coming down. Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. And Shizo, Death Storehouse, comes down for Crick. They sack the Crystal Veins, so they must be going for their commander here. Yeah, if we had double blue, I would definitely counter this. But we're struggling on lands and... Got a feeling we're not going to draw into one next turn either. Maybe should have gone for the Slither Blade. Anyway, down comes Crick. Seven cards in hand. And I think this is their Shadowborn Apostles deck. Yeah, so there we go. Shadowborn Apostles. Yeah, Juggalo is a mythic patron of the channel and got me to play their Omnath Worms deck. You've probably already seen that by now. And yeah, if they stick around for next month as well, I'll be playing the Shadowborn Apostles variant. So hopefully they get to show it off here. Anyway, just playing out one Apostle. Harrow for the lands player. And then using that mana for a Nature's Law, because Harrow brings the lands in untapped, as does Nature's Law. Okay, and they bring in a tapped Shock Land, so I think we are going to go for the Brazen Borrower. Oh, actually, it's Petty Theft, isn't it? And we'll bounce the Crick. Oh, it's um, only on Creature Spells, so we actually can't go for that. Never mind. Definitely should have played out the Slither Blade then. Didn't wait long to make a play mistake. Still hoping for a land. Haven't drawn one in the first three turns. Now there we go, exactly the colour we needed as well. So yeah, definitely should have gone for the Slither Blade last turn. But not to worry, let's go in for Anawan. And then who's likely to have more creatures? I think because of Shadowborn Apostles. I don't know what type of Sisse deck Go goes is. They make really creative decks and I doubt that Sisse will be any different. Um, let's take one in at Gogo -Go because we haven't hit them yet and we'll take one in at Juggalo. And hopefully we get to draw some cards here. Well, unfortunately not. Uh, we just got a bunch of lands there. We got rid of an Urborg, that's good. Uh, they are down to two lands so maybe they'll struggle on getting into stuff at that side of the field. Also got a Sheltered Airy which is Enchant Land, and it taps for two mana of any one colour. So no creatures being milled for us, unfortunately, which means no card draw. And go, go, just playing a land and tapping out, so unfortunately not able to do anything this turn, apparently. We're just holding up Fierce Guardianship at this point. Now three mana goes into Ad Nauseam. Uh, yeah, that's a big no-no, I think. Don't think we need to be seeing an Ad Nauseam. 
probably just go for a bunch of Shadowborn Apostles into hand with that. And then dump them all into play. I mean, it will suck up a lot of their life, but they can probably gain a bunch of life somehow. You never really know what your opponent's going to be doing with Crick, but you assume that they'll gain the life back that they lose. Anyway, throwing out another Shadowborn Apostle, going down to four cards in hand. And there's another one. So I think at this point, we are going to want to use the, uh, the Petty Theft uh, correctly this time. And bounce the Crick, because, yeah, it's going to start swinging in at us for countering their stuff. Uh, I think we're going to be pretty slow this game, so I don't want to take too much life. Let's just block with a fairy. Argument to be made for taking it so that we can potentially... We've got more potential to draw cards if we've got more rogues in play, but... Yeah, maybe should have let that through. But you also never know when you're going to go down to commander damage with a crick. Now the final commander coming in, a boon, Moldaya Ancestor. And then a land comes into play in the form of Cross and Verge. And they animate the stomping ground. Cross and Verge makes two lands, I think. So it's for a forest and a plains, yeah, so they'll make landfall twice with that. Now a 4-4 coming in at us. Okay, well, there's a damnation if we're desperate. Yeah, do we go for the slither blade now? Like we should have done a turn or two ago. Tell you what, let's turn sideways first. I think we're holding up Brazen Borrower, but we can't hold up Mana Drain and Brazen Borrower if we play the Slither Blade. So let's just see if we can draw a card first. And we'll swing our commander in at Gogo -Go because I doubt they're going to block with Sisse. Really eager to get into a land here, really. Okay, Mill, a whole bunch of nothing there as well. Tendrils of Agony, again, good to get rid of. Swiftfoot Boots is as well. Uh, and Thrumming Stone, so those mills were actually good, even if we didn't get rid of a creature. And just a couple of lands again, so, yeah, doesn't look like we're up against very creature-heavy decks. Maybe we're just being really unlucky. So I think we go Slither Blade and help the chance along even more, and we'll just hold up the Petty Theft. Not holding up Mana Drain, unfortunately. Another bounce land from Sisse, they're going pretty slow as well. Go up to eight cards in hand. And they've got the Azurius bounce land, a shock, and the Gruel bounce land. Alright, now we could bounce the Crick now. But I wouldn't mind them dumping a bunch of life into their spells because they're low on lands as well. So I think I'd rather bounce all their stuff and then wait to see where they swing in. If they come in at us then we're probably just going to bounce their Crick back to hand. And if they don't get a land here, they won't be able to play it either. Well, they do get into another Swamp, but tapping out before they swing in, so we won't see a Crick again this turn. Sisse discarded a Tezzeret Artifice Master, by the way, which suggests that this is a Super Friends deck, so we'll have to not ignore Sisse. All right, a Grim Tutor. And if this is in fact Super Friends over here, then it's not likely they'll have all that many creatures, so I'll probably stop swinging in over here for the card draw. I know Lens Matter has a decent number of creatures, but not quite as many as you would think necessarily. And uh, yeah, obviously we assume that there's at least 30 Apostles in here. Now let's see where this Crick swings in. Might bounce it anyway, because I don't want them to gain life. And they do come back in at us, so we will use the Petty Theft on them. Bounce the Crick. Yeah, they should have been able to give that fear with Shizo, Death Storehouse, so that this could get through, but then again, there'd be no point in that because we can still block with a Fairy Rogue. Anyhow, that gets through. So we've got Brazen Borrower to cast for the rest of the game if we want to. Then it's Sakura Tribe Elder, Billy Kills, just quietly ramping over there. And then our Boon Triggers... And turns the Valakut into a 4-4. If they swing in at us, which they are not, but if they were swinging in at us, we could have double blocked there and gotten rid of the Valakut. Okay, going in at Gogo. -Go. Billy Kills might have worked out that this might be a Super Friends deck as well. So starting to lay some damage over there. 
Now for our turn, Bitter Blossom will continue to trigger. We get into a land, and of course it's a tap land. That pretty much sums this game up mana-wise for us. Uh, we can't hold up Mana Drain either because of this. Yeah, yeah, mana's a concern in this one. Well, we'll see if we can draw some cards again. Let's take the Ana one in at Go Go. If it is Super Friends, then they're probably going to be wiping the board a lot, so we have to lay damage over there as well. But we're not likely to mill creatures on them, so I am going to concentrate on Crick for now. Don't necessarily want to knock them out of the game, but I do want to keep their life total low so that they can't do as much with their commander. All of those things get through, so we're going to mill a bunch. It is 8 over here, knock them down to 12. And it's only two here. Let's see if we get another Planeswalker. Alright, milled a bunch there. Ah, there we go. Shadowborn Apostle. Uh, three of those gotten rid of. Got rid of Skull Clamp. That's really good. Some lands. Uh, Evan Stronghold. Got rid of Aetherflux Reservoir. This is really good. And then it is Utopia Sprawl. And another Bounce Land here. Uh, we've got Luta Il Core. I think we just go for the Brazen Borrower. And then we'll play a Fetid Pools in tapped, and that gives us more blue mana at least. Now six mana and a full grip from Sisse, and yeah, it's only five mana for them to do their ability, so here we go. First activation on Sisse, whether like Captain. Let's see if our theory's correct. Yeah, that pretty much confirms it. Oath of Nyssa. And with Oath of Nyssa, they reveal Ashiok Nightmare Muse. A Shadowborn Apostle for the mono black player. And discarding down to hand size again, a Garrick Apex Predator. Uh, I think there is a black and white sorcery that brings legends out of the graveyard, so they might not necessarily care about dumping these planeswalkers into the bin. So, yeah, Gogo was just asking me in the chat why we're not swinging in at Billy Kills. And yeah, that's why, because they can do these huge reanimation things. And it's likely that Super Friends wants to wipe the board a lot. Obviously, Crick is Crick, so we want to uh, keep them under uh, under our thumb as well, as best we can. It's not to say that Billy Kills isn't someone to be worried about either, though. Cracking the Crowson Verge. And I think they cast Sakura Tribe Elder and cracked it this turn. Oh no, they cracked the Sakura Tribe Elder. And crack the Cross and Verge at the end of Juggalo's turn. So now it is round to Billy Kill's turn. And here we go, the first Lands Matter card of the game, Titania, Protector of Argoth. And they go for the Windswept Heath, not the Cross and Verge. Windswept Heath only grabs one land, but it is much faster. And cracking the Windswept Heath to get a 5 3 elemental into play. The commander is now a 10-10. And then at the beginning of combat, they turn their plateau into an 11-11 with Trample and Haste. And uh, yeah, the Trampler comes in at us. We might have to wipe the board, speaking of board wipes. Uh, the 11-11 going in at Go-Go. There's not really much point in us blocking this because we're only blocking two points of damage. So we go down to 21. Alright, and there's a strip mine. How many mountains are there? There's one, two, three, and four. So there are ways off Valakut yet, but they could always drop Dryad of the Elysian Grove or Prismatic Omen to make all their lands into uh, Landfall Lightning Bolt with the Valakut. So, yeah, I think we're playing the strip mine this turn. I think we'll leave the black player alone now. They're at a quite low life total. And I'm not worried about a big X spell gaining them a bunch of life or anything. So let's take the creature that can't be blocked in at Billy Kills. Because they are starting to swing in at us now. So we're kind of being forced to ignore the Super Friends player and start going over here. Uh, but for the sake of maximizing card draw, let's take one in at the black player anyway. Hopefully we'll mill an Apostle or a Demon or something. That will give us another card draw. Yeah, let's go like that. So everything here is swinging in at Billy Kills, apart from the one token going in at the black player. So it's eight damage to Billy Kills. And we do draw a card off of that because we got a creature. And we draw another card. 
in the what is that one called frog tosser banneret makes our rogues cost less and it's a haster so we can probably wait a turn on that one uh yeah we got a shadowborn apostle there and over here ah there we go dryad of the elysian grove got rid of that uh return of the wild speaker is a really good one to get rid of uh generous gift is gone exploration is gone yeah so we got rid of some good stuff from them there uh, myriad landscape gets rid of a lot of landfall as well every chance that they can play lands out of the bin okay so let's go for yeah let's go for the frog tosser banneret maybe should go for this next turn because someone might go for a board wipe if we don't want to see a board wipe yet we can always go for mana drain but going for the banneret allows us to play the looter ill core for only one mana and then we can go strip mine and hold up mana drain and this looks like another activation on captain sisse ha <laughs> just going for elspeth son's champion uh they could minus down on that and it wouldn't do anything to us i mean elspeth son's champion is really really good but uh yeah i'm not going to use a mana drain on that going for the plus so not getting rid of the big creatures and you've got to think of how the board state might affect what your opponents do as well i know it's a bit like 3d chess but if there's going to be a big trampler over here they might be encouraged to go over at elspeth before she becomes too much of an issue and the land creature should be able to trample through these creatures quite easily and hit elspeth for a chunk well there's crick they go down to eight life i'm going to hope that of the two cards in their hand there's nothing to worry about yeah i'm going to be optimistic and leave the mana drain in hand they're still waiting on a couple of apostles at this point and not playing anything just passing the turn at that over to the lands matter player and a land enters immediately then it's a mina and den so they'll get another landfall if they've got a land in hand three cards left in hand at the moment they might just bounce a land here yep they go for bouncing a land and they're going to give their commander trample then playing the land that they bounced and then they'll get to make a 13 13 elemental out of one of their lands so targeting a basic forest they did play that this turn i think this gives haste though doesn't it yeah, it gives haste to the land. That's something you have to be wary of with um, with man lands. So yeah, making that a 13-13 with trample and haste, and it can swing him. And we get to eat 13 damage here. Um, what's the swing back like on this player? We've got counter magic for if they try and do something like wipe the board. I wouldn't have thought they would wipe the board. Um got two four six uh that is ten and then eighteen and twenty so that won't be enough to get rid of them i think we just have to block some of the damage with our rogue tokens that we left back so let's block six of that and then sisse feeling as though she is forced to block as well and they did swing in at gogo -Go directly by the way not going in at nissa or um not nissa elspeth so she will be able to minus down next turn which she probably should do if they're going to consistently get swung in at oh and only just missing out on commander damage there going down to 10 life and 20 points of aboon commander damage we are down at 13 juggalo is down at eight i mean surely this turns into a game of arch enemy at this point didn't get a chance to use mana drain like i hope there though i thought there was going to be a five mana spell of some kind or hope there would be or oh, oubliette is good uh yeah let's drop a swamp just asking gogo -Go if he's going to minus down on elspeth next turn to get rid of some of these creatures that'll also give us an insight as to what to do with oubliette i don't mind i probably will so that that gives gogo -Go a bit of wiggle room to um go back on his word there but i'm just i mean we're in a tough spot here aren't we what do you do against uh <laughs> against three players like this super friends crick uh, massive stompy lands matter i mean yeah i think we've done all right considering especially considering we were 
struggling on lands at the beginning of the game. So we'll just see what we can draw into. There's an argument to be made for us wiping the board ourselves, but I'd rather have Elspeth tick down. We kill two birds with one stone there. So we'll turn some things in at Billy Kills. Uh, a couple of things can't be blocked. That's a flyer, so don't think they have reaches, do they? Nope, no reaches. Uh, this has shadow, so it's pretty much unblockable, and we'll get to loot there as well. So let's leave it like that. So there we go, we get to loot with the Looter Il Core. That gets us into Expedition Skulker, which will have Death Touch. Uh, I think we have to get rid of that, unfortunately. I don't think they'll keep from swinging in at us. They'll probably just take a land in at us, to be honest, even though we've got a Death Toucher, so let's get rid of that. And then we're dealing 10 with our rogues to Billy Kills. So we get into a Talisman of Dominance. So I think if we go like that, it's Talisman of Dominance. And then we can go Oubliette onto Crick to keep from life being gained over there. And then we just have to hope that Gogo does decide to mine us down. I mean, he's on 20 commander damage, so you would hope he does. Let's go for Oubliette. We'll hold up Mana Drain and the Strip Mine. And the Oubliette goes on the crit, like I said, to keep the life gain from occurring. They'll also not be able to cheat things into play, although it's not likely they will with that little an amount of life and cards anyway. So now it's a case of seeing how long we can last. Yeah, being true to his word and going for the minus four, or it's, uh, it's minus three, isn't it? And destroys creatures with power four or greater. We will lose our Brazen Borrower, but that's the only thing we lose here. Alright, going for Boros Charm. Not going to allow that, I'm afraid. We can't. I'd like to use Mana Drain on something better than this. They could have Teferi's Protection as well, or something like that. But at least we forced them to use two of their Protection cards. They've still got Priority held up over here and two cards in hand, so... There's every chance they've got something. Well, we managed to counter there. And it looks as though Elspeth is going through. So no uh, Teferi's Protection or anything, luckily. So we can go easy on... Well, I don't know if I will go easy on the Naya player, to be honest. Haven't had a look at what we milled from them yet, actually, have we? Uh, we've got Valakut Exploration off of them, Walking Atlas, uh, Budoka Gardener, we saw the Boros Char, Mina and Den, and Titania obviously got wrapped up in that board wipe. I think I spotted a Keranos there as well. This is what happens with the graveyard when you're trying to look at it. It just closes itself. Yep, Xenagos, God of Revels. I think I just said Keranos there. I meant Xenagos. Yeah, just looking through here and seeing what we might be able to reanimate with a, um, a Scarab God, if we're able to last that long. Anyway, what's going on over here? Uh, Nissa Vital Force, and they've managed down to grab a permanent out of the bin. And then cast Jace, Vryn's Prodigy. And what permanent did they grab? Uh, they got Fabled Passage. So just playing that and cracking it, I think. Yeah, they went for Fabled Passage, played and cracked off of the Nyssa Vital Force. Not too worried about this as long as they're not instantly going for the Emblem, which you can do with that card. Now let's see what the Mono Black player can do. Okay, decided to just take themselves out of the game there, seemingly. I'm not sure which spell it was. Oh, they went for Hatred. Yeah, Hatred, I'll put it up on the screen. They can just put as much life into that as they want, so... Taking themselves out. And now I'm going to hold up priority during Billy Kills' turn, because if they go for getting the Elysian Grove out of the bin, or playing a Prismatic Omen, I am going to shoot this. They grab their Aboon again. Might even go for the strip mine on whatever they animate if it swings in at us. Well, they get down Blighted Woodland anyway. So they might be able to make a bunch of landfall this turn and make their commander really big. Which makes the land really big, of course. Yep, they're cracking Blighted Woodland. Which is two plus counters on a boon. Then animating their Savannah. Let's see where they go in with this. Yep, they're coming in at us, so kind of forcing us to use the strip mine, I think. Uh, 
yeah, they're still at 19. I don't think we can get them. 2, 4, 6. Well, they probably block this. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah, I just don't think we can take the hit here, unfortunately. So let's strip mine that out of the way. We're losing life to Bitter Blossom, don't forget. Do get into a land and we'll get two mana from countering the Boros Charm. Uh, so here it is a Scarab God, I think. So that we can make use of the mana that we've made. And then I think we have to take out Elspeth before she makes too many tokens. And then I want to get Billy Kills down as much as I can. Uh, so let's go with the unblockable stuff. And then we might be forced to ditch our Anawan. We'll see what we loot here with the Luta Ilkor. We'll put Luta Ilkor on the stack first if we draw a card with Anawan. So down to 13 they go. We managed to get rid of Elspeth. Let's put Luta Ilkor on the stack first so that we've got more cards to look at. And discard. Yep, yeah, there's a Drowned Catacomb. So then we draw in two. All right, that might be good. A copy of a creature you control, except it's a rogue, in addition to its other types. Uh, what could we reanimate with the Scarab God? A champion of Lamholt might do something for us. There's Rada as well in there now. Generous Patron. Yeah, Generous Patron might be good. Uh, Titania. Yeah, Dryad of the Elysian Grove could have helped us earlier on, but I don't think we care about it now, and I don't think we've milled a single creature here, have we? No, it's all Super Friends stuff. So I think we're alright to get rid of the Damnation at this point, as, yeah, as much as I don't want to. We're not likely the one that wants to wipe the board. So we'll reanimate something with the Scarab God. Uh, can we do this instant speed? Yeah, we can do that whenever we want, so we'll just uh, wait on this thing for now. Jace Vryn's Prodigy should be able to flip over really easily as well. So, yeah, I don't know if they've got anything in here that they can cast with that. I don't think they do. Nothing for us to worry about anyway that I can see. I mean, it's hard to look through graveyards when they won't stay open like that. Yep, yeah, there we go. That's the one I was talking about. Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Return all legendary permanent cards from graveyard to battlefield. Oh, and there's an Ugin in the bin as well. Didn't see that one, so... Yeah, bringing everything back. That's why I wanted to get rid of Super Friends. But like I said at the beginning of the game, if you're up against three powerful players, who'd you get rid of first? You're between two rocks and a hard place. Making a Thopter, first of all, with the Tezzeret. And then it's minus five on Ugin, so this will get rid of everything apart from our talisman. So this is probably the game for us. Uh, there's nothing colourless we can bring back, is there? Could bring back a walking atlas, but there's not really much point in doing that. We could just play that for a blocker, I suppose. Would be a 4-4 blocker, at least. Anyway, let's go for an activation. We'll stop losing life to the Bitter Blossom, at least. Oh, actually, <laughs> does it turn it into a black creature? Oh, it's a black zombie. Right, okay, well, forget that then. They get rid of their own soldiers, at least. And get rid of some of their own planeswalkers as well, which is probably why they ticked up the Tezzeret first. Don't think they did anything with the Nyssa there. Anyway, Elspeth ticking up for the soldier tokens to come back. And then making a beast with Garrick. That's probably us done for here. Maybe the Lands Matter player will be able to come back, but... Yeah, this is the problem with uh, Super Friends. They've got lots of board wipes in the deck. That's why I was targeting them first, but then <laughs> Billy Kills came smashing in towards us, so we kind of had to uh, fight back towards them, try and dissuade them from coming in at us. Anyway, getting down their commander again. I think that's the third time they've cast it. Then Wayward Sawtooth with two cards left in hand. This can block an attack, which is going to be relevant against these. And they're making a... it'll be a 3-3, because they haven't made landfall. Yeah, the 3-3 three, three comes in at us. And <laughs> guess what? Now we start getting into lands. I uh, think I'm going to have to hold up Mutavolt as a blocker. Let's just get our commander into play. I 
I'm very, very doubtful that we're going to win this one at this point. And we'll go for Drowned Catacomb. And there's no point going for the Glass Pool Mimic. What a difference a turn cycle can make. Going to point the destruction at the Wayward Sawtooth. And then going for a Lightning Bolt with Ugin onto their Aboon. The 3-3 Beast comes in our way. Might be that they've got damage or... Oh, this has Death Touch actually, doesn't it? Yeah, forgot about that. Uh, so a 3-3 Death Toucher will just have to take it. And we'll hold up the Muta Vault for some other time. The other tokens are going in at Billy Kills. If Kills can get into some haste, they might be able to get down their commander with haste and smash through with commander damage, although they'll need trample now as well, won't they? Didn't realise Elspeth hadn't been ticked up yet. Out comes that Ashiok that got exiled so long ago. And uh, they make a token with that as well. And now it's Oath of Gideon, which will make even more tokens. Well, a boon comes out with a Black Blade Reforged. No means of equipping that, unfortunately. So that's probably just going to eat a Lightning Bolt again next turn. Not bothering to animate a land. And it's Swift Foot Boots for us. Yeah, we're just not going to do anything. Uh, they probably just turn everything in sideways at us next turn. So let's just play the boots. Uh, throw it on Anawan. And we'll just have to pass like that. You never know, they might not account for the fact that Mutavolt is in play. But they should be able to get enough damage off with creatures alone. And then Lightning Bolt someone. I would think that would be enough to win them the game here. Alright, well not using the damage to get through to a player. They get rid of a boon with that. Turning everything in sideways apart from one core. Uh, yeah, looks like they're getting rid of Billy Kills. Bunch of these soldiers going in over there. We get a Thopter. We get the 3-3 Beast. The Illusion at Billy. And the Core at Billy. Uh, so maybe we could... Yeah, let's just take it here for the fun of it. And maybe we can hit this player with the Muta Vault and draw a card. I mean, we're not winning this one, but... It's just fun to play around with. We could make the um, Glass Pool Mimic a copy of the Muta Vault. So taking down Billy Kills, we go down to one. Might be that they've just got some means of dealing damage to us. Oath of Teferi, there we go. That will allow them to bolt us with the Ugin, because they can tick it up again. And going straight in for it. So there we are. Go, go, winning that one. And they did have a Wrath in hand, as we, uh, as we thought they would. I mean, it's Super Friends, so... This is what you do with Super Friends for anyone who doesn't know. You get a bunch of Planeswalkers into play that make creatures for you. And then you can just consistently wipe the board so that your opponents don't have creatures to swing in at the Planeswalkers and they're much more difficult to get rid of. All of that really off the back of the Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Not really something that we can play around when we've got big huge creatures smashing in towards us. Um, so yeah, don't really feel too bad about losing that one. Obviously we could have taken Golgo out uh, before then, but we had to uh, spread the threats around between different players. So like I said, not too disheartened by the way the deck performed. Just didn't get into mana early on, and then later on we weren't milling many creatures to get card draw going. So maybe need to insert some more means of card draw outside of Anawan. But this is only the second game I've played with that, so I am happy with its performance so far. You can all let me know what you think of this game in the comments section. Be sure to leave it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.